drag racing brings together the most powerful modern machinery yet devised for sprinting. Stripped of all unnecessary additions, modestly presented, but with credit given where it's due, like horsepower, choreography by Nureyev, and harmonica playing by almost anyone. Everyone can have a go at this new sport. All that's needed is to select the right gear, a vehicle of some sort, fuel, and the ruthless determination of a superbly fit athlete. Basically, one also needs a supercharged seven-litre engine, beautifully tuned and put together, with any other special go-faster modifications that can be found. And after everything fails, a drag racing is for everyone. The competitors assemble in the paddock, adjust their timing, their driving position, and talk. There are 73 classes of dragster in the States, from the dope-injected blown V8 to the single-cylinder, force-feed, dry sump type. Most American machines, currently clocking around eight seconds for the standing quarter, are meticulously prepared, down to the asbestos fire suit and the bird-winning smile of the constructor. This device, in particular, has a speed across the finishing line in excess of 204 miles an hour, and only rear-wheel drive, George. This type of sprinting against the clock is something we know about. Everything is poised for the first burst of long-legged horsepower. And he's away. And so is the car. The Americans call this a factory production car. Firstly, production, that on the far side, with a mini-engine at each end. And this is something different, too. What appears to be a remnant of the fourth bridge has a blown VW engine somewhere amongst the gas tubing, and with both feet on the ground to keep the beast upright, Howard Germans proves his point. A brave man. And the unknown hero in the chair outfit can do no more than lie down and enjoy it. Things are warming up. And there seem to be a few problems with this cart. All you have to do is start it, stop it, and steer it vaguely towards the checkerboard. It's all very simple, really. Moonbeam, humorously described as a sports car, gave Dante Dew's fastest time of the day at Brighton. Tony Nancy still doesn't believe it. But Deuce rolls it away, getting up to 130 miles an hour at the end of his run. This car started life in 1933 worth about 130 quid. Now, equipped with automatic transmission and the hairiest Dodge motor you've ever seen, it's insured for about 12,000 pounds. But anyone with enthusiasm and a modest bank balance can have plenty of fun at this game with virtually any vehicle. And what really attracts people to this sport? Because all the boys want to come. Um, they're very interested in it. Why? Oh, just for the fun of it, you know? <laughs> We've never been before, so we don't know. We like to see how it's properly done by the Yanks. I've never seen drag to racing before, so I've come to see what it's like. It's interesting, it's something new, isn't it? Well, I enjoy the day out, see a few friends, a few beers. Um, nothing much else to do. Nothing else to do? He must be joking. I enjoy it. I've been following motor racing for about 40 odd years, and this is a change. As the front wheel breaks the beam, it activates the timing gear. Now the British made drags does it come into the line. So far, the majority of local men are using British engines. Riley and Austin and Ford, compared with a blown Plymouth mill whose power is fully on from the moment the flag starts to move. Cool. Now, over to Sydney Allard. Uh, well, this is dragster racing. This is a, a type of sport being brought from the States. Uh, over a quarter of a mile. That's a straight sprint over a quarter of a mile. To give you some idea of what we are aiming at today, 
one of the drivers has attained 197 miles an hour at the end of a quarter of a mile. And this is the main object of this form of sport. Now, Tommy, Tommy Ivo from California, who's one of their top-notch experts, has got his car here. Now, Tommy, what are the uh, main features of these cars? Is it sort of all in out weight on the rear or what? Well, I think one of the most astounding things is the horsepower that's put out. The engine's put out well over a thousand horsepower. The engine is moved toward the rear of the car, so to get as much weight on the rear wheels as possible. Yeah. And they do accelerate at their best from zero to 200 miles an hour in a quarter of a mile. These tires right here, they're very, very large, and they'll wear out in about six runs. It just tears the rubber off of them. The car goes into so heavy a smoke that you come, sometimes you can't see where you're going. Uh, one other point, uh, you, you, you drive solely on one gear and use the tyres as a form of fluid flywheel. Uh, what I can't understand is why you sort of don't stand on the starting line still with all this terrific spin. Well, that's one of the tricks of driving these cars is to see that you're, you can look out to the side and see your smoke pattern and see that you don't have the tyres boiling too hard. Sometimes you'll get excited and do it and then lose the race because of it. Another interesting feature uh, is the parachute. When we go to stop the car again, that's another problem. So we put out a parachute like they use on aircraft for landing jet aircraft on short landing strips. Another thing, too, that I might point out is these cars, when they start out, they'll start out so fast that they'll actually pull the front wheels off the ground and run along on the rear wheels. And you don't really rely on much on steering, then? No, no, you don't. You catch the steering as it's on the ground. It'll bounce down every once in a while, and you'll point it in a new direction. The flag rises and the starter, and Sydney Allard's dragster, the first to be built in this country, gets its chance against Moonbeam. Moonbeam leaves first, but... So the meeting reaches its climax, or Chevrolet, with Tommy Ivo and Don Garlitz achieving the fastest ever seen in Britain, naught to 200 in just eight seconds. This is here to stay.